Yes, I am a ninja. expands when it freezes so we tried like plastic metal all those things and then finally we got a smooth ice surface we tried it but on the first bounce it shattered and that was only a test bounce so it can't work if in one bounce it shatters so we weren't sure why and then we figured out it was because of the material. Metal can flex and those things. So if it, when the puck bounces, it'll flex and then the ice will shatter. So we, um, we were planning to go to a flooring store and get cement. And then we ended up going to an ice arena. So a better place. Yeah. We talked to a man um, named Pete at the um, Saltary Ice Arena. He's um, um a they nice were nice manager. enough they were nice enough to um, let me in and well not let me in on the phone. Um, they were nice enough to uh, give me over to Pete and um, he um, we asked him some questions and he gave um, some great answers. So we asked him questions like um, what was the temperature are the chemicals? Does the paint on the uh, concrete affect the ice or surrounding it whatsoever um any of those kinds of questions and uh we got some answers um the ice rink is held at 30 degrees uh fahrenheit <laughs> um there are no chemicals in the ice whatsoever there are chemicals however down underneath in the pipes helping it freeze um there the paint doesn't affect the ice at all. So, um, so yeah, um, there, the, I, I think the reason that we didn't, we didn't get it, um, before was because the pla like plastic moves around, it bends, it does all this stuff, and the ice can't bend along with it. So the, all the ice, do, like, ice is a solid. It shatters, like, right? Like, um, so, uh, I think what we needed, and the reason that the ice um, at the rink is, like, it stays, it doesn't shatter, is because there, they have cement under it. And cement never flexes, always keeps its shape, and so it's like a very strong material, whereas plastic or metal, as we tried at home, wouldn't work. We've, uh, we've decided to take our um, hockey puck challenge to a public skate so that we can test it on the real ice and have our real ice rink. Right now what I'm making is a scale and basically it's going to track how high the puck, how high the puck bounces and at its top we'll freeze it right there. And then we'll see exactly how high the puck bounced on the scale. As you can see, I'm making a scale. Each blue line represents a centimeter. And each black line represents five centimeters. Hello, this is our scale for our hockey puck challenge mini Mythbusters. Basically, the scale, um, so the blue lines represent every centimeter, and then there's a black line every five centimeters. And that goes on until 60 centimeters where it drops off until 100, and that's where we drop the puck onto the ice. We're going to be taping this scale to the boards, 
Um, you may notice some of the lines are a bit wavy, but that's okay because um, they do always self-correct at one point, and we're still um, we're still confident we'll get a good measurement. So we are going to be freezing a puck and not freezing one, and we're going to see if freezing it actually makes it bounce less. And that's what the myth is. So we've taken the um, the frozen puck out of the freezer and it actually looks like there are no coats of ice over top of it. It's just a really, really hard puck. Now, personally, I think nothing's going to happen. It's not going to change at all. Well, this is a real puck. You can obviously see the difference between them. I can actually like feel this one's really hard. It's also cold. This one is like sort of flexy. Um, I think the flexible part would be bouncy. We're gonna find out. So now we are um, we're putting the frozen puck into a bag that we're going to take to the arena and test out our data. We're at a nice arena. We couldn't get the icing right, so we decided there was no better place to come than the real thing. So we're gonna test it, tape our scale to the boards. And With one normal puck and one frozen puck in the that, 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 that dad's holding. So I'm really excited. I wonder what's going to happen. All right. Should well, we we'll test it. Yeah, because I want a good day. confirmed and we'll see you in a few minutes. Alright, so uh, we have collected all our data and we um, have some crazy results. The first way that we have um, we have shown our numbers here is the average, aka the mean. So the way you um, the way you find your mean is you add up each data point and divide the total by the number of points. And in um, the way we did it, it ended up to be 
for frozen from dropping it by a hundred centimeters and the bounce it ba it bounced on the ice 1.4 centimeters before hitting the ground and uh, for unfrozen again from dropping it from a hundred centimeters it bounced to a high of um, 12.0 centimeters at average um, yeah, so there are some other ways that we've collected our data and shown it also. So, um... The, um, one of the other ways yeah. is the mode. Um, that is when you lay out your numbers and then you pick the one that occurs most times in your counting. So, on our case, it is frozen is zero centimeters and unfrozen is 16 and 18 that means it's tied and when that happens it counts both not in between it does both all right and the last way we did it is our median so um the way we did our median was um we uh we gather up all our numbers and put them in order. And then the two or one middle numbers, it, um, usually the one middle number um, would be your median when you lay it out, um, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and ETC. If you have two middle numbers, though, if it's an even number that you have, mm -hmm. then you count both of them as your median, and, um, and then um, put the right in between both numbers. So if it was 12 and 14, the answer would be 13, and so on. So um, our median ended up as frozen, it was one, and unfrozen, it was 13. So we had some crazy results. None of us expected, but um, I mean, that's all part of learning, right? I was wrong and right with what I expected. I thought that there would be a coat of ice on top of the puck when we froze it, so it wouldn't bounce as much. And the rubber would flex a bit, so it would bounce higher. But it, I was actually wrong. It, it didn't have ice on top of it, but it was still really hard. And I was shocked with how much a difference it made. I thought it would make a difference, and also, I thought it would be that the frozen one bounces less. But I had no idea that was how much of a difference it would make. Yeah, he... Same here for what I expected. I expected exactly the same thing for Milo. I knew the NHL had a reason for why they froze pucks. I knew they didn't just throw them in a freezer. But I didn't know by how much. Like, this was, like, 11... Basically, 11 centimeters in difference for how much they bounce. It was crazy. It's crazy. And so, he actually, Josh did think it was, he didn't think there would be a difference until I told him the reasoning of why it would. And then he thought, like, oh, yeah, that's a good reason. That would be why. Right. And, um, yeah, it seems as if throwing pucks in a freezer for even just like 20 minutes really reduces the bounce of how much the puck has. So our hypotheses were, um, they right, were right, they were right, but they, we never expected such a big margin in between frozen and unfrozen pucks.